So calendars inside Go High Level. So before we even get into calendars, I will say if you are using Calendly to schedule sales bookings for your agency, I would continue using Calendly. It's more reputable. The deliverability on the reminder emails is almost all but 100% guaranteed. The deliverability on the texts is all but 100% guaranteed. And you know that when people see Calendly, the, again, it's it's just more reputable, right? So I prefer Calendly. I personally use Calendly to book in all of my sales team uh, sales teams bookings. However, for leads, I do book in um, appointments for clients through Go High Level just to keep everything centralized inside Go High Level. Now, that said, calend or, um, Go High Level calendars have improved tenfold in the last just few months there they've actually gotten a lot better i still am just a little concerned about email deliverability um, and the text reminders with the new a2p coming out and how strict the carriers are getting it's just a peace of mind that i like to have for um, just knowing that calendly's reminders are guaranteed to land in the inbox not be marked to spam when we're talking about emails and land in the inbox and not uh, be undelivered when we're talking about texts. However, uh, I still use them for clients, so let's break down how to uh, set up calendars. And then we'll have a specific, if you do want to use this for your sales team, um, which you can, or just for, even for yourself for booking in calls for your agency, again, you can do that. I will have a video on that because a lot of people do it and don't have any issues. Um, so I will have a video in the in-depth guides section of this course on how to set up a calendar um, for a larger sales team. So all that out of the way, uh, two minutes into the video, let's actually start talking about how to set up a calendar. So how to do this. When it, go into a specific sub account, we're going to hit calendars on the left and then calendar settings up top. Okay, and we, we're just going to hit new calendar. Now, there are obviously four different options here. Go High Level breaks down um, each one of these. 99% of the time, you can just use a simple calendar. If you're just booking in appointments for your leads, like if you have a, a client, uh, like a gym client or a dental client, a chiropractor, whatever niche you're in, and you're just booking in an appointment, and the only functionality that you're using with the calendars is to schedule a time and send reminders, then I would just use simple calendar. If you're using a, uh, if, if you have a sales team or a another specific use case, you might want to use one of these other ones. We'll go over um, round robin for, the, for uh, booking in calls for larger sales teams. But for this example, let's use simple calendar. We'll hit select and we have to name the calendar. Uh, call this primary calendar. We can add a description if we want. This is just, um, this will show up on the calendar though. So this is public facing. And we do have to add a custom URL. So this is going to come from um, similar to Calendly. This will come from Go High Level. <clears throat> and then we just add in our thing. So let's say this is like easy grow, go high level course calendar. Okay. And then meeting duration, obviously how long the meeting lasts, and then your availability. All right. What days are you available? How long are you available for? Now, I would go into advanced settings when setting this up. Okay. And this way you can see everything else you're able to edit. Um, again, you, you can change the name right here. You can change the description, which is public facing. You can add this, uh, add the calendar to a group or add a group to a calendar, change the slug, um, or you can change the title. So what, uh, this means contact name, go, go high levels default here is that on the calendar, if John Doe was to book in an appointment on the calendar, it would say John Doe. If you wanted this to say something else, like um, 
sales call and then contact name. Oops, contact name. You could do that, right? And for anybody who doesn't know what this is, this is just a, a code that's telling Go High Level to use uh, variable data. Meeting location. So this is something where you could say you could say like Google Meets or Zoom. Or if your client has a physical address, you can type in the uh, Northwest Test Street. You can type in the physical address there, right? Um, and we can act, also work this into the automations. So when we're sending automated texts to remind them about a booking, we can say, hey, uh, our location is, and then uh, we would just put in the meeting location for the appointment as opposed to actually typing it out inside the automations. That way, if they ever move, like move locations, you don't have to change all the texts and all the emails that you're sending out. You just come in here and change the location on the calendar, and it will uh, it'll change it for all of the uh, texts, and you only have to edit it once, right? So availability, because we're in the advanced settings, uh, we have some more control over the availability. Uh, this stuff's pretty self-explanatory. I'm not going to break it down. Um, again, self-explanatory. I don't want to break this down. Uh, meeting interval. So this means how often can people schedule? So if you put this into like 45 minutes, that means people can schedule every 45 minutes. Uh, 15 minutes or like a half hour means like they could select 1, 1 2, 2 3, 3 and so on. Uh, how long this lasts is meeting duration. Scheduling notice, how soon can people book? Can they book, you know, if you do this, they can book immediately with like five minutes notice. Uh, they need, you know, it blocks off your calendar for 48 hours, um, and then they can only book in 48 hours afterwards. Um, date range, yes. So this would be how far out can they schedule? So let's say like five days. So we don't want people schedule any further than five days out or any sooner than one day right maximum bookings per day what I like to do is I like to go unlimited on this and then uh, limit it to the slot so like if my if I'm running appointments for a gym for example and they can only take on three people per class then I will just come in here and max this out at three but allow the the bookings per day to be unlimited. Uh, buffer time is just how much time will it give you after the, so if you have a 30 minute appointment, this will block off your calendar for 45 minutes total. Okay, very similar, if, any, if you guys are using Calendly, it's almost identical. Um, forms and payment, so you can select, or <clears throat> you can collect payment um, when people book in. So if you wanna collect payment for your client when somebody books in, like maybe you're not offering them a free session, maybe you're offering them a session for $25, you can do that here. Um, you can also select what information the leads will fill out when they book in. So Go High Level will give you a default form, which is they fill out their first name, last name, email, phone, and notes. Or you can go into forms and you can actually create a form for them to fill out. So if you want more information than this, or if you want less information for some reason, just trying to reduce resistance, then you can edit the form that they are uh, filling out, edit the, the information they're filling out. So pre-populated fields, um, I would actually always turn this on. So especially, this is very nice for when uh, leads will use an opt-in form and then they're redirected to a calendar form. The calendar form will pull their data from the opt-in form and pre-fill it for them. So if they filled out first name, last name, email, and phone on the uh, opt-in page, it will pre-fill on the calendar page a nice way to res uh, uh, reduce resistance. Uh, consent checkbox. So this is something on the calendar page, it will say something like I, here, it actually says it right here. I confirm that I want to receive content from this company using any contact information I provide. I turn this off. Um, you could leave it on if you want. Technically, you're supposed to leave it on if you're going to start marketing to them after they've booked in, even appointment reminders. 
don't listen to me. I turn that shit off. Uh, you can allow people to add guests if they want. And then confirmation page. So what I do on this is because all of my bookings come from either my staff booking people in or the, if the leads are booking themselves in, it's done on the funnel page and then they're redirected to the thank you page. So this becomes uh, completely arbitrary. It will actually, it, it, it has, the leads will never see it because the leads will, instead of seeing this, they're redirected to the funnel page, uh, the, the thank you page inside the funnel. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, if you watch the funnels video, uh, that will, will make more sense. But I just leave this default because nobody ever sees it. If you want to attach Facebook Pixel, you can do that here. Okay. Uh, now, very similar to this confirmation message, uh, all the notifications, I actually don't send any notifications through the calendar except for adding it to Google Calendar. Um, and the reason why is because I build out workflows, custom workflows, and there will be a video about that specifically, how to set up appointment reminder campaigns in the in-depth guides. Uh, video of this course, but I don't like to to do uh, notifications with the calendar. I build it out custom. I suggest everybody builds it out custom. Um, it just works better. You have more control over what's being sent. So, in other words, turn this off. Connections. Uh, if you want to link a Google Calendar, you can do that here. Now, one thing you'll have to do is connect to your uh, connect to Google first, and how you do that uh, is you'll actually go into settings, and then you'll hit integrations. And I don't want to click off this uh, quite yet, but I will. I will cover it. Uh, you'll hit integrations, connect to Google, and then come back here, and you can select the calendar uh, once it's connected to Google. Customizations. So this is how the uh, calendar page looks, like what the actual UI looks like. Um, just Select them both, test them out, see which one you like better. I I have tried both. I did not notice a difference uh, in performance. By the way, they both work. Uh, they both work completely fine. Uh, if you want to enter any uh, custom code, you can do that here. Now I allow both rescheduling and cancellation, but what I do is I just don't send the leads a link to cancel, and I do send a link to reschedule. So they my team can cancel on behalf of somebody else, so like, but we don't allow the leads to actually cancel themselves, right? It's just, it's just bad practice to do that. You want the leads to reach out to you and cancel. Say, hey, I'm not gonna make it in because my kids are sick, right? Then you can cancel the appointment on the back end, and you, you actually have a conversation started with that lead instead of just the lead canceling and then they fuck off and you never know why. And it's just the conversion rate is better um, if you don't allow the leads to cancel or you do allow cancellation to happen, but you don't give the leads a link for them to do it themselves. I hope that makes sense. Um, additional notes, this is just backend stuff. Um, it's actually, uh, it doesn't matter what this is because we're kind of going to go around this because again, when we book in an appointment, we're going to redirect them to a thank you page instead of just using the calendar to do it. Um, similarly, we're not going to give them any um, reminders straight from the calendar. We're going to use uh, workflows to do that. So let's go ahead and save this and let's talk about integrating that Google Calendar because a lot of people do have questions about that. Now, uh, did they move it? No, okay. So hit integrations over on the left and we'll just connect to their Google account. And once it is connected, um, what you'll do is go back into calendars. You'll edit the calendar and under connections, you will then see the Google Calendar right here. So pretty basic, very easy to do that. Um, Go High Level might change the steps on how to do that. On you know, 
from when this course was created, when this video was recorded, um, because they are updating things way quicker than I can update this um, or stay on top of it. There's They update so often. So if things look a little bit different, the functionality overall, guys, it's going to remain the same. You'll have to connect the Google account, your, your client's Google account, to the sub account, and then go into the calendar and link it up there. Um, but if the functionality has changed since recording this video, uh, just let me know and I'll, I'll be sure to update it. And I also appreciate you letting me know so I can update it. So that's calendars. Um, actually, one last thing before we end this video here is if you want to work in the calendar link um, to, your, to your automations, you can actually copy the link here and you can just send this uh, or place this in the automations or something else that you can do is uh, you can copy this link and you can just text it straight to leads. However, what I suggest, and a lot of people do that, but what I suggest is having a page specific for the um, for the calendar, like just like a funnel page, and then that way when they book in on the calendar from the funnel page that you send them, instead of just sending them a link directly to the calendar, it redirects them to a thank you page. But that is, that's up to you guys. I would suggest doing it through funnels, um, but you can do it through this calendar as well.